us on the loop. <laughs> Thank you for coming out tonight. This is this is awesome. This is my final show of the season out here on Hatteras Island. So you guys, I think you're lucky to get in on it, and I'm lucky to have you here. That's that's cool. America's favorite old man. Well, if you search for that on the internet, you get me. You just can't believe what you hear on the internet or what you see. The uh, favorite part, I don't know where they got that. They evidently didn't check with Steve, the sheriff's county deputy here, <laughs> or with my ex. But I've got the old part down. You ask, how old? How, how old? old? 75. Wow. <laughs> That's she? That's called a sympathy wife. <laughs> I'm so old, I worry about what's going to fall off <laughs> next. And I'm not even Caitlin. <laughs> I'm so old, I was born in MCM XLI. Now, you recognize that as. <laughs> I always have to explain it to people from New Jersey. <laughs> when I was a kid, that's all we had. Not New Jersey, the Roman numerals. <laughs> Back then we had a whole different meaning for it. X, X, X. <laughs> Looks like some of you need to watch more Sesame Street. <laughs> or a little less porn. <laughs> Roman numerals take up so much space, the serial number was bigger than my Apple iPhone. <laughs> and every time I'd dial a number, I'd get Roman charges. <laughs> I told, I don't know if I told you last year about my hand. Well, I want to make sure I include that, so I'm going to put it up front here. Let's hear it by applause if you've ever done anything stupid. I was getting ready for you. <laughs> well, I went to the Dominican Republic kiteboarding. That wasn't the stupid part. But in the mornings, I should have stuck with kiteboarding, but instead in the mornings before the wind came up, I did SUP. Now that's S-U-P. Stand up paddle boarding. As opposed to what I do up here, suck. <laughs> Come on now, stand up comedy, as you see. Well, I paddled across the bay to a little isolated beach, stepped off the board, and noticed a wave coming in. It didn't like me, it was just a little wave. It was going to take my board from me, flip it up on the beach. I says, I can win this bout with Mother Nature. I grabbed a loop of rope at the back of the board and held on tight. The wave flipped the board over, twisting the rope around my fingers, and then slammed it. I won. I still had the board. <laughs> but not on my hand. I knew I was in trouble when I looked down and saw my index finger dangling by some skin. That was good news. I knew where my finger was. <laughs> Think how embarrassing it would have been otherwise if people had been around. Hey, has anyone here seen a finger? <laughs> He's got it. Catch that crab. <laughs> well, I put the finger back on the stump to give it some circulation of blood, held my hand up to keep it from bleeding, and I noticed I didn't break one fingernail. <laughs> That's important, isn't it? <laughs> I also but didn't notice that I'd just broken my first two bones. So I grabbed the board with my good hand, trying to get some help. <whistles> the only person around was the security guard across the little road at a big house. Didn't move a muscle. So I decided I would use my extensive Spanish vocabulary. Emergency! -a. <laughs> he looked up. That's all. 
until I put my finger back in dangle mode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got up, put my board where it'd be safe. So I could go back to the road and hitchhike into town. Oh. Hey, hey! First car passed me up. Well, would you stop for a barefoot guy wearing only a wet black hat, a little wet red blood, a little wet black speedos? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's funny about that. <laughs> this, the second car did stop. It was John Paul from Germany who spoke English and knew where the hospital was and how to get there through Las Terrenas, through all the moto conchos and 500 speed bumps. Now, moto concho, you know what a moto concho is? Yeah. It's a young guy on a small motorcycle, zoom, 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 that'll take you anywhere in town you want to go. Well, I couldn't see going to the emergency room in my current state of abbreviated attire. So we stopped by my hotel room. There was a shirt on the back of a chair, so I threw it on. It was grubby. Mother would not have been proud. What does your mother always tell you? Always wear clean underwear. In case you have, you're guilty, right? In case you have to go to the emergency room. Well, I also put on my cargo shorts over my wet swim trunks, and that was stupid. And embarrassing when John Paul had to, since I only had one hand, had to zip me up. <laughs> had I realized then that the hospital was going to make me wait three hours before they got me into surgery, I would have done some other things. I'd have taken pictures of my hand oh. on my website for bragging rights. <laughs> the only pictures on my website now, if you go to ArizonaLube.com toward the bottom, it says about lost some fingers. The graphic pictures are toward the bottom, so you don't see them first thing. But the only pictures I have are after my fingers were sewed back on. I would have put on a clean t-shirt. I would have put on clean, dry underwear. Mother would have been proud until she would learn that John Paul would have to tuck me in. Well, when I got to the hospital, the nurses ganged up on me. The nurse to the left put an IV in my hand so I couldn't escape. The nurse to my right bandaged my hand in a great big ace bandage so they couldn't, wouldn't have to look at it and would forget how badly I needed attention. And then the, my nurse took me up to the second floor to my room. Of course, in the elevator, because you've got to do that. How many have been in a hospital where they gave you a hospital gown? <laughs> Typically they say, well here, put this on, I'll step outside. Well, I didn't speak Spanish and my nurse didn't speak English. She handed me the hospital gown and stood there. Just motion and so forth. She stood there. I think she wanted to make sure I took off everything. And at the same time, maybe she was trying to take inventory and make sure I had everything. <laughs> I got even with her, though. She took me down to get my hand x-rayed and sent me up to my room by myself. Well, I took the grand staircase with my lightsaber in my hand. Now, you medical types know what lightsaber is, an IV pole with bags and tubes and wheels and things. We're, but only one step at a time. I usually take two steps because ah, I wanted to make sure I didn't hurt my hand. I was discharged late the next day. And I felt silly in spite of the fact that these fingers were splinted and bandaged. All I had was my thumb and my pinky. I took a moto concha back to my hotel. <laughs> And I felt kind of silly doing it until I saw my surgeon on the motor control. <laughs> Back in the hotel room, though, I could still use my hand. 
made an excellent hat rack. I could do the wave. And I'm not even Queen Elizabeth. I could change TV channels. And I, I'm not, there, there's one thing I, I couldn't do. And this gets into the PG-13 part. <laughs> I could no longer engage in my favorite activity I like to do in the evening while I'm on the internet with my right hand, holding my pencil and taking notes. <laughs> my hand's not completely rehabilitated. I can't make a tight fist. But I hope when it is, I'll be able to make a tight fist and then keep my center finger erect so I will have the proper equipment for driving in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> I, to avoid confusion on my trips, I go by Arizona Lou. And some people think maybe I'm big headed for doing that. Well, about 30 years ago, I was sitting in a circle of instructors. I don't know what's wrong with my S's tonight. Going over student surveys. Survey says Lou was great. Lou was the best. Lou was magnificent. I was popping buttons left and right. Well, that's not true. I wasn't popping buttons left or right because I was wearing a t-shirt. But across the circle was Lou Blum convinced that all the surveys were about him. Someone says, and this was on the West Coast, hey, you've got to avoid this confusion. Since you're the only guy from Arizona, I'm going to call you Arizona. And the name has stuck for 30 years. Before 1912, when Arizona became a state, I went by, Territory Lou. <laughs> and before that, Caveman Lou. <laughs> These keep coming, and they get worse. <laughs> What's funny about that? Before that, Ditch Lou. Told you they'd get worse. It's just a little ditch, and it grew and grew, and then. Grand Canyon <laughs> And before that <laughs> Jurassic Blue <laughs> People think I'm from ancient history. Well I've always had trouble with history. In college I got a D. Well no wonder they hadn't yet invented word processors, spell checkers, or girlfriends. And then in high school, I got the coach. We heard a lot about football and his war stories, but nothing about the Oregon Trail. Probably all started in junior high when I was distracted by a pesky bone. My own. <laughs> It didn't help that the fashion in those days was tight blue jeans. <laughs> this is the point where one lady walked out <laughs> on the lunch. <laughs> I'd look down to see if it was noticeable, and then I'd look around to see if anybody noticed. Then I would look around to see if anybody noticed me looking around. Yes, Miss Perkins, the answer's the silk trade route. Now, Lewis, you know that's not right. You're going to have to pay more attention. But Miss Perkins, you don't know how hard it is. <laughs> Do you see what I see? That last part is just what I thought. <laughs> if I'm lucky tonight, I won't fall asleep. Which is not going to be a problem with you guys. You guys are awesome. In fact, you're so awesome, I want you to come and spice up my funeral. <laughs> You can do it. Too late, it was last Thursday. <laughs> but if I'm lucky, I remember what I want to say. And if you're lucky, 
I'll wander off somewhere. Da, da, da. <laughs> silver alert, silver alert. <laughs> Do you have those in your state? Yeah. Well, I just hope I don't wander off to Chicago. Did you see the latest news? Shootings there are up 88% over last year. Well, murders are up too, but only 72%. They obviously need to take more gun classes. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chicago. Aren't you glad I didn't say you're? <laughs> the uh, us seniors do tend to forget stuff and get lost, but it's it's kind of stupid sometimes. Senior and stupid. Doesn't that remind you of Congress? And in my case, I picked my electric toothbrush up where I dropped it and brushed my teeth. Hey, I was just standing there. I hadn't done anything yet. It's waterproof. I rinsed it off and every week I cleaned the toilet. <laughs> I got lost driving here with my GPS. One highway. Can you imagine getting lost on one highway? <laughs> GPS. You ask, what's that? What's, what's that? that? I forgot. <laughs> For you young people, probably generation positively savvy. <laughs> now, if you're from Los Angeles or what's north of there? San Francisco, gay and perfectly satisfying. <laughs> or in my case, geezer plain and stupid. <laughs> stupid like thinking an old guy can stand up here and be funny. But you know, every generation has had stupid people. And some people become famous for being stupid. When I was a kid, we didn't have the Kardashians. We had the crazy mountain man. Hey, I climbed this mountain during a thunderstorm and talked to God. Brought down these two rocks, and you people were so disgusted, and I smashed them, and they were important. I don't know how they could have been important. They didn't say anything about Pennsylvania <laughs> or sunsets. But that wasn't the worst of it. I gave him directions. He ignored my directions, went out to the desert, and got lost and wandered around for 40 years. <laughs> Anybody know who that was? Moses. Somebody from the Bible. Mo Moses. Moses. He must have gone to Sunday school. <laughs> Every Sunday. <laughs> yeah. And if this were a bar, I'd say, what in the world are you doing here? But that's <laughs> okay. He wasn't as weird as bad as the guy that got lost four times on the wrong continent. You know who that was? Give you some hints. He went to Genoa University. Columbus. Didn't, yes, yes, yes. He didn't, Columbus. He didn't study very well. He was strong-headed. Hey, nobody's going to tell me what to do. Hey, tighten the jib. Hard to starboard. He couldn't navigate by the stars very well. Then he had trouble with his on star. <laughs> well, never could hold a heading. Well, this is my last time to do a comedy show here on Hatteras Island this year. And I'm about to pee in my pants. <laughs> or did I? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Only you guys at the front will know for sure. <laughs> like they say in SeaWorld, ladies and gentlemen, during tonight's performance, the front row might get splashed. <laughs> That's disgusting. You better think you're better off up there in the parking lot tonight. <laughs> you guys back there are smarter than we thought you were. <laughs> well, there's also the way a little girl holds her little baby doll. Have you, have you ever had a doll that closes its eyes when you lay it down? You've seen them.
raise it up, opens its eyes. But that's unrealistic because babies don't go to sleep as soon as close their eyes as soon as you lay them down. Someday they might install proximity magnets so the baby doll won't close its eyes until the door taps its head. In the future, it's going to be different. The little girl or little boy will close the baby doll's eyes this way and open them this way. Anybody here like science? Sure. Yes. Do you know why? Because the little girl's living in the microgravity of outer space and just has to swing the pendulums around. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good use for proximity magnets. <laughs> but it's different. It's more of a challenge in the tropics. The little girl has to close her baby doll's eyes this way. And open them like this. You know why? Why? Because the eyeball bearings are all rusted. <laughs> well, then there's the way I held my first grandchild. All it took was 10 seconds to understand crazy grandparents. You'll be there someday. <laughs> Just ask them. <laughs> but there's other ways to hold grandkids. <gasps> this one leaks. <laughs> or, here, mommy, stinky baby. <laughs> Speaking of holding things, my mom used to say, Lewis, hold, uh, hold your horses. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of outdated. In the <laughs> 70s, during the space... <laughs> yeah, I'll point to him. Yeah. <laughs> during during the 70s, it was cool your jets. Do you know what it is nowadays? What, what do you say nowadays? Chill out. Chill? Yeah. yeah chill. Take a chill pill. Take a chill pill. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> or don't have a rack attack. <laughs> or calm your tits. <laughs> <laughs> or if you go to Hawaii, you want to remember. Hakuna, your tatas. <laughs> well, somewhere between the horses and uh, the jets, it was hold the phone. All means don't get in a rush. But it means something entirely different nowadays. It means, here, take my phone and watch my video. You can't hold it like this because you might send it into telephone Never Never Land. You can't hold it by the edges. You might put it into a mode to explode. You have to balance it on the palm of your hand. Has anybody ever done that and broken their screen, dropped it and broken their screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching too much Sesame Street. <laughs> or that other word. <laughs> well, I have t-shirts. I can't sell them here, but if you want a t-shirt right after the show, after, after the sunset, I'll go up to the parking lot by Dollar Tree and you can buy them there. They're 10 bucks cash or credit card or debit card, whatever you have, and all profits go to a charity that helps senior citizens and their caregivers. No, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, so, see me if you want that. And who knows, it, depending on how my comedy career goes, after five years you might say, I've got this Arizona Lou t-shirt, it's a good 12 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> or you might say, I've got this Arizona Lou t-shirt, it's good for stinky baby. <laughs> <laughs> well. There's some things I still don't understand, even at 75. I got a new TV. Why did it make the backs of those all black? It's dark as midnight back there. And when it comes time to hook up your equipment, it's like sticking a hard pin into a black hole. Some people say, I meant to do that when you get the wrong hole. Some people aim for the wrong hole. Well then, I have a Sony computer, and the keyboard is so bad, it randomly doubles letters and leaves letters out. 
So I, when I was in the Dominican Republic, I wrote, I, you know, about being in the Dominican Republic, it left out the L, and I'd actually called it Dominican Republic. <laughs> <laughs> there went my reputation. <laughs> like I had one after that pee joke. <laughs> I excitedly, another time, told my daughter, I just got booked for three minutes at Harris showroom. She wrote me back, sorry about Harris, Dad. I read the email, the computer left out a K, and I had actually written, I just got booed for three minutes. <laughs> But I feel good about Harris Showroom. Well, they felt sorry for me, so they gave me three minutes. And it wasn't, it was in Nevada, but it was not Las Vegas. It was a little, have, has anybody here turn, heard of Laughlin? It's the wannabe Las Vegas. Harris in Laughlin. <laughs> well, if I had some water, I'd drink a little water right now, but I left it in the van. The, uh, I try to be fit. Oh, I have a Kindle. Anybody here have a Kindle? You know what you know what it is? E reader? I got a book from Amazon and I don't understand why they call it the hardcover edition. There's no cover. <laughs> and how can it be hard when the book's software? <laughs> well my age nothing about this body is ever hard. <laughs> Well, I take it back, maybe one thing in the mornings, crawling out of bed. <laughs> you know, science is so slow in some areas. They have been making bread for 30,000 years. They still haven't figured out how to keep it from having bubbles in the middle. So when I make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, some of the pieces have holes all the way through and it becomes a peanut butter and jelly mess, which... <laughs> well, I... I'm having a senior moment, I do believe. <laughs> the... Uh, I plan to live a long time. On my 100th birthday, I plan to still be in the game. Although by then I would have forgotten what game. <laughs> but you can bet I'll still be behind. But I'll have company. The Cleveland Browns will still be there. <laughs> 33 days after that birthday, I'm going to be here with you guys, bringing in the new year, 2042. I will have to come up with about 960 million heartbeats. It'll be a billion heartbeats for you young guys <laughs> get to pull out. Or you ladies if you forget your devotions. <laughs> well, I try to be fit. I went to the gym. Uh, on the way though, I, I got a hold of some string beans. They were so stringy, by the time I finished eating them, I'd already flossed my teeth. <laughs> but have you ever, I don't take supplements like creatine. Have you ever seen the guys with great big bulging muscles that do take creatine? They have little tiny dicks. <laughs> That's what I hear. <laughs> well, I have little tiny muscles and a great big mouth. <laughs> That's why I do stand-up comedy. I stopped by a store on the way, food line. I don't park close to the door. That way I can stir up my tired blood as I run in for a few things. After I made my selection, I was running back to my van. The kid says, hey, Grandpa. How come you're running so fast? Well, you would be too, kid, if you've been shoplifting. <laughs> 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 
string beans. <laughs> I stopped by Jim. And one wonders what crime all those people committed to be there on the treadmills. Maybe eating? The guy to my left was really fast. I said, hey, what you doing passing me up? Treadmills aren't supposed to work that way. Well, you're just a little white guy, and I'm from Nairobi. <laughs> so, that's the capital of Kenya. And we go to Boston, and we win marathons, and we don't bomb. <laughs> then I went to the machines. You know, anybody here like history? Yeah, okay, cool. I remember the machines from when I was a kid. They just added logos and foam pads to machines when I was a kid during the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> but have you ever noticed from pictures back then, the naked subjects on the rack always had a little white cloth covering just the right spot? <laughs> I was the towel boy. Hey, don't put him on the rack yet. I've got the towel here. <laughs> well, you people have such strange ways of doing things nowadays. If I was in the mood for to see some agony, I'd say, hey, I'm going to go down to the dungeon and visit the Inquisitor. Well, for some people, that's new work. You guys say, hey, I'm going to go down the street and visit my chiropractor <laughs> or my personal trainer. Some people, that's a new word, too. <laughs> but the inquisitors would put bodies in impossible positions. Well, we call it inquisition. You guys call it torture or yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I went to the next. I went to the weight room where they have all the free weights. And you know, I've had to quit doing bench presses because they <laughs> bolted them all down. <laughs> I can. Have you ever pressed any benches? <laughs> well, then I went to. Bench press is where you're laying on a bench and have a yeah. bar yeah, like yeah. this. Except, of course, comedians have to switch stuff around. <laughs> I went to the free weights, and I've had a terrible time getting the 45-pound dumbbells home. You know the free ones? <laughs> Put one of those in my gym bag, and I'm so unbalanced. My ex would say, Lou, you've always been unbalanced. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about putting one in each hand, but then wouldn't it look suspicious leaving the gym with two gym bags? <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't run. <laughs> I went on a trip here to Kuiper, which I do every year for 16 years. and. When there wasn't enough wind to kiteboard with my friend Tim, we'd be on Pamlico Sound doing suck, stand up paddleboard. While I was struggling to balance on my board, he was on his doing yoga. <laughs> For the flexibility, show off. Well, anybody here, anybody here taking yoga? Have you taken yoga? <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> See, we know this. That's yoga talk for howdy, partner. <laughs> I know about this yoga stuff because here on Hatteras, I took my first classes for the flexibility and the view. Of the ocean. <laughs> Turns out the first class was inside with the lights out. <laughs> so much for that. <laughs>
I did find out what it was like to be a human, perhaps so. <laughs> Heather, our instructor, said, just relax. All the motorcycle goes by. Well, she had us holding the two by four. Now, us yoga types call that the plank position. That's like me telling you to relax with one foot on the boat and the other on the dock. <laughs> I'd go down farther, but I'd hurt myself. <laughs> the hardest thing for me to hold was the doggy style. Now, us yoga types call that the downward facing dog because they haven't yet invented the Gangnam style. <laughs> I called it arms torture. <laughs> that wasn't all I had to hold. I had a determined methane bubble that desperately wanted to reach the atmosphere. <laughs> now, you've all been there. Of course, the medical types call that a fart. <laughs> I was able to hold it with some concerted effort. But after the second half class, Heather came around and used some smelly stuff to massage my head. This one. I just hope she didn't mess up my hair. That's a joke. Because <laughs> this hair is a joke. What should be growing here is growing out my ears. <laughs> At least it keeps the bugs out. <laughs> My ex say, Lilla keeps the bugs in with all the craziness. <laughs> well, the fourth class was yoga by the beach. And there was the Atlantic Ocean. But I was toward the back and couldn't, couldn't see it through all the young distractions in containers of shapely spandex. By the end of that class, I didn't even care if I saw the ocean. <laughs> Sometimes you get what you want. It's not always a good thing. During the sixth class, we were asked to look at our navels. That was the view. <laughs> Shape up, Lou. I wasn't the only one with the pesky methane bubble. Someone let one escape, and it was one of those Minimal displacement, extended duration, maximum amplitude expulsions. <laughs> Frequency modulated. You call that a long, loud. Fire. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're from New Jersey, then it's a toot. A toot. <laughs> I started to lie until I realized I was the only one. And that's when I learned in yoga you've got to know when to hold them. <laughs> I uh, went to Maui kiteboarding and uh, I saw an 85 year old guy getting kiteboard lessons. I took care of him and now I'm the oldest surviving kiteboarder in the world. <laughs> the, uh, There wasn't as much wind as usual there, so I did a lot of sup. And this is before the Dominican Republic, before I was any good at it. The first challenge was for me to get the board across the beach, across the sand, into the water. Everything went pretty well until I got stuck in the sand with my little electric rascal scooter. <laughs> so I decided to hold the board sideways. Well, that went pretty well until I boom, boom, took out two kids and boom, bing, took out a mother breastfeeding the baby who was finish, offending an old man. Bing, 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 took him out. <laughs> Solved that social problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I decided to hold the board with a handle. I don't know why they call it a handle. Have you ever carried a, a sub board? That, it's not hardly deep enough for your fingers. They should call it a bingo. <laughs> well, when I finally got the board down in the water, my challenge was to go see. He's, she's got a yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not very deep. 
My challenge was to go from my knees to standing up. And it looked something like this. I should have had a walker. <laughs> but I did get away from a lifeguard. <laughs> hey, get out of here. This beach is closed to old men with big boards. <laughs> I did really catch a wave. There on the Kailua Harbor, I rode that little wave 563 feet. My caregiver never caught me. <laughs> Coming back on the airline, I got very well acquainted with the airline bathrooms. And I declare the Boeing engineer said, let's measure people to make our bathrooms three inches smaller. <laughs> and then they put the situated so the wall was curved and you had to stand like this. <laughs> And then when it comes time to wash up, there's no delay on the faucets. As soon as you take your finger off the faucet, it's water stops. You know about that. So trying to get your hand under there for water, well, you know you're not going to make it in time. Sort of like the last time you had diarrhea. <laughs> and then when it comes time to dry your hands, you notice the opening for the paper towel holder is this wide, the paper towels are that wide, so you're guaranteed to get confetti <laughs> because it has a real strong spring and shreds the stuff. And then the waste door, when you go to throw your <clears throat> trash away, is so strong the door launches the confetti back into your face. <laughs> and then when it comes time to leave your private throne room, you notice the door opens in which means you have even less space than you started with. <laughs> and then they rub it in with a little note on the door that says, pull. That means you have to touch the place that everybody else has touched after they've touched their stuff. <laughs> now for me, it looks something like this. We've got four ladies here, and I just raised the toilet seat, and you hardly even noticed. <laughs> Shame me. I want to hear some noise. I'm going to do. I'm going to do it again because I wouldn't have had to do it. I'm in this bathroom by myself. Nobody would have known. And besides, it's an imaginary bathroom. <laughs> I want to hear some noise now. <laughs> How come you're laughing, sir? <laughs> Whose side are you on? <laughs> anyway, then you do what you have to do. Here's where a microphone comes in handy. <laughs> you can't rush a good thing. Uh, you may have to change this visual if you're a young lady or if you're gay. <laughs> Whoosh! Have you ever noticed that flush is so violent the toilet paper flaps in the wind? No, not that kind. You're disgusting. <laughs> no, sir, it was the person before me. <laughs> well, I collect boxes. Does anybody here collect boxes? You don't read your instructions, do you? Read your instructions. Every, almost everything is says, save this box, because you have to send it back. So I've got boxes for TV, printer, office chair, mother-in-law. <laughs> Let's hear it if you've ever gotten those red, white, and blue boxes from the post office for priority mail. You've gotten those? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever read that warning that's inside it? No. Inside it says those are government property. They're not yours. And I have some at home. 
in my closet. Does that make me a closet criminal? <laughs> I'm getting so many boxes in my, in my house in Phoenix, I may have to move out into a box, <laughs> which is going to be difficult with mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, no, that's not true. She's dead. <laughs> hey, I'm dying, so are you guys. Hopefully after I do. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how we sugarcoat death? Hey, it's gone to be in a better place. It's gone to be with the Lord. My family's convinced that I'm not in that category. <laughs> pushing daisies. I'm going to be pushing dandelions and weed. <laughs> Collecting 72 virgins. <laughs> well, also on the way to death, people try to sugarcoat that too. You know, when you were younger, did, they, did you have the old folks home? Mm -hmm. You sent grandma to the old folks home. Well, they decided that might offend some. So then the, the senior sent her. But then they decided that might offend someone. You know what they have up in Kill Devil Hills? The Dare County Older Adult Center. <laughs> now by the time your grandkids do, they will send grandma, which <laughs> is going to be you probably. <laughs> they will send grandma to the older toddler center. <laughs> and she'll toddle in, and she'll toddle back out. <laughs> when I was a kid, I'm so old, we would send Grandma to the corner of the cave. <laughs> oh, people have a tendency to, to want to pretend they're not what they are. For example, I have what they call ugly age spots. Hey, those are normal. I've worked a long time on these things, and I'm proud of them. But they take something that's normal, natural, like the, the unibrow. Oh, you can't have a unibrow. We've got to get rid of those things. Uh, it's natural, but make people dissatisfied, and then maybe they'll spend their money on stuff. Well, I spend more time in front of the mirror looking for things that aren't wrinkled or not sagging. <laughs> not having very much luck in that. The, you can join us for some comedy if you want to sit down, or you can go ahead and do whatever you're doing. Sure. The, uh, Daddy, this I don't know how I'm going to leave this world, but I want to go leave it going as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun! <laughs> I want my obituary to read something like Arizona Living. In an avalanche of boxes. <laughs> this is uh, something I did for the first time last night at the Hyman Bar. But I'm so old, I can drive a stick shift. Anybody else? I'm not talking about a boner. <laughs> But while we're on a good family laugh there. While we're on the subject, I volunteered for a clinical study of my act. It was in Virginia at the University of Longwood. <laughs> 
And it, well, it, I expected it to be a lot harder. It was one of those double blind studies. Even the researchers didn't know what was coming. They put us in hospital gowns. We looked like Sheriff. Have you heard of Sheriff Joe? Look, he's a tough sheriff that put his inmates in tents. We looked like Sheriff Joe's tent city. I was the only one without a rigid tent pole. Imagine propping up your tent with one of those things you get from Dollar Tree. A fun noodle. It wasn't fun. It was embarrassing and not uplifting. <laughs> we were bored. Well, bored stiff. <laughs> well, I, I was just bored. We played Monopoly until the other guys knocked all the pieces off the board. Happy Sack was interesting, a little painful. <laughs> Our version of tag we called Pokemon! <laughs> Go! <laughs> they hated my favorite. <laughs> Twister! <laughs> when they saw me coming, they were scared stiff. <laughs> and you don't want to hear about our target practice. We appreciated it when the researchers gave us. Come on, join us if you'd like to. We appreciated when the researchers gave us a shake break. <laughs> they also gave us homework. Yeah, it wasn't very hard for me. One of the guys says, hey, Doc, can we help each other out? Well, let me look. It has to be hands-on, self-service. No double headers. But that homework is when I learned that when it comes time for your lube job, you don't need expensive, special stuff if you go to Dollar Tree and get their hair styling gel. It's a good thing I was raised a Baptist. If I'd been a Catholic, after each session, I'd need confession. And I would have a dishonorable discharge. <laughs> I, at 75, it's hard for me to stand erect. And couldn't keep my eye on the ball, make that plural. And one of the doctors said, hey, you're just hanging around and accused me of being a swinger. <laughs> I just hope that, uh, oh, he said I was all nuts. <laughs> well, like I said, I, I have t-shirts here. If you get one after, you'd see me outside a Dollar Tree. And who knows, depending on how my comedy career goes, you might have something worth nothing at all. Or you might have something good for cleaning up after homework. I uh, had voice surgery. Sunset's coming along just fine. I had voice, voice surgery, and it's embarrassing trying to do comedy with a squeaky little voice. I sound worse than Jay Leno. And sometimes my voice goes up high. It's embarrassing on the telephone. Hello? May I please speak to the man of the house? <laughs> I am the man. <laughs> or worse yet, hello? Are your parents home? <laughs> yes. I put them up on the mantle. <laughs> they told me in life, 
to earn everything. <laughs> you people are fantastic. Give yourselves a hand. I enjoyed having you tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is my last comedy show.